around the wide world of tropics. Proper weather bulletin for July 26th. Well, here we are on the 207th day of the year, and there is only one system active by our analysis, and that is Tropical Storm Info, which has yet to make its full landfall in China, yet it's pretty much stationary at this point. 92 storms are the average, and 43 have formed so far this year. It's day 56 of the Atlantic hurricane season, and we have Invest 90L, which chances have been decreasing on over the last 24 hours. It is now down to a 40% chance. Not much time left before the window for development closes. In the Eastern Pacific, it's day 72 of hurricane season. We have Invest 98E, now up to an 80% chance of development by our analysis. Uh, that could become a short-lived truck with depression or storm as it crosses into the Central Pacific. And we have another 40% AOI south of Mexico. In the Western Pacific, it's an active frenzy in the subtropics with info now in China. In Apartheid, we're still giving a 30% chance of development, although those chances are decreasing. And we have two other areas of development uh, far to the east of the Philippines and Taiwan. In the North Indian Ocean, we're looking at a pretty blank slate as per usual for this time of the year. As we head into the end of July, it does not look like anything will be forming in this particular basin, and it is exactly what you expect with the second part of the season, not beginning for another two months at the very least. Here's the North Atlantic satellite imagery. We pretty much have not much going on. You can hardly see uh, 90L there due to the fact it's been struggling with wind shear and dry air. Uh, that has been uh, keeping it from developing any sustained convection for a while now. In the Eastern Pacific, you can see 98E there chugging along to the west there. Just a matter of time before we figure out whether it will become a tropical storm and if it will get the name of Hilda or Hone as the, those are the next two names in those particular regions of the Eastern and Central Pacific. In the Western Pacific, you can see uh, Infa there, which is now the third costless typhoon. Uh, on record, and of course the Partak, which does not look like a tropical cyclone at all, and we're still not giving it any kind of tropical cyclone analysis at this time. Just a disturbance chugging along uh, towards the north. And with that, we're bringing you to the North Indian Ocean satellite imagery. Not much going on, your average monsoonal activity that's going on in the Bay of Bengal. Uh, some cloud activity going on around the Arabian Sea as well, but other than that, there's really uh, no large-scale features to really discuss that isn't out of the norm. Here is the uh, satellite imagery on Infa, which is still extremely large, uh, slowly weakening as it continues in that little channel there. It should be making its second and final landfall in China at some point over the next 12 hours. Um, and then, of course, it will be weakening as it pushes inland, but rainfall remains a giant threat with that one. Here is the sea surface temperatures. The 30 degrees Celsius waters are starting to appear a little bit more towards the coastal areas of Mexico there. Uh, in the Gulf of Mexico, we're looking at those 28 to 29 degrees Celsius with now 30 degrees starting to appear. The main development region is sticking around 27, 28, or 29 degrees Celsius. Uh, the Caribbean seems to be the coolest spot in the tropical Atlantic so far. Um, and of course the Gulf Stream remains around 27 to 28 where 90 L is. Here's North Indian Ocean. We're still looking at those extremely cool temperatures to the area around Oman with 24 to 25 degrees Celsius temperatures there. By the time you get into the Bay of Bengal, it's around 28 to 29. In the Philippines and South China Sea, there's still some 30 degrees Celsius waters, although it's less than what it used to be. And then of course the Sea of Japan is much warmer than normal with temperatures there or 27 to 28 degrees Celsius there. Elsewhere, the Western Pacific remains generally warm and the Southern Hemisphere remains generally cool, as it should be around this time of year. Here are the sea surface temperature anomalies, and the first thing you can see is just how massively warm the Sea of Japan is compared to normal over six to seven, even eight degrees Celsius above normal. Uh, the normal cold spell go around from California into south of Hawaii, and of course the main development region is still looking about one to two degrees above normal. On this day, July 26, in 2008, Feng Guang had just become a Category 1 typhoon, would soon enough become a Category 2 before impacting Taiwan, causing $500 million worth of damage. 
a tropical storm Genevieve, which was formerly a hurricane, was weakening substantially the eastern Pacific, and what was left of Dolly was now entering New Mexico as a remnant blow. Of course, our On This Day products can be powered by Cyclone History, which has their own uh, Twitter account, and you can see that at the bottom of your screen. Well, here we are at the next name segment of the TWB. Next name for the Atlantic does not seem to be coming soon. After all, Fred and Grace are the next two names regardless. In the Eastern Pacific and Central Pacific, we're waiting for that showdown. What name will 98E get if it does get named? Hilda and Ignacio are next in the Eastern Pacific. And in the Central Pacific, everyone's still waiting to see when Hone will come. In the Western Pacific, we're still looking at for Lupit and Marine. Allegedly, Nepartek should have been next, but of course, that got classified recently. And in the North Indian Ocean, we're still looking out for Gulab and Shaheen. In the Australian region, we're looking out for Patty and Ruby. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna followed by Patsy Ray. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody. I'll be back for another TWB tomorrow night. See you then.